Today I'm doing anodizing and I'll take you step by step through the process as I do it. You'll find a lot of other great videos on YouTube as to how to do anodizing but this is the way I'm doing it. The end product should look like this. Those are the raw plates right there. I'm anodizing end plates for a friend of mine and part of how I go about it is I have them some labeled specific steps others just what they are step one is basically simple green and water it's you know I don't worry too much about contamination because that's basically at the end of its lifespan anyway step two is a fresh mix of simple green and water that I keep very well filtered to try to keep any contaminants out I use distilled water as a rinse water try to keep any minerals from getting on the aluminum that way you don't have to worry about spotting and the final prep before going in the anodizer tank is 740 cleaner you get that up to about 140 degrees and let them soak in there for about three to five minutes depending on how bad you think the part might be usually I do about three minutes in it the step two and step one I do at room temperature so don't have to worry about that then it goes into my anodizing tank that right now I don't have set up ready to go it's just holding the uh, battery acid and water mix I go three gallons of water per one gallon of battery acid uh, they consider that a low current density uh, ratio for battery acid to water and when I'm about ready to do the anodizing part itself I'll go ahead and start going through what I use and how I set it up so for now though I gotta get to cleaning okay first I'm going through step one with any of the processes use disposable gloves I like using the nitrile style because they're more chemical resistant it saves your hands from you know getting dried out and scratched up because I usually like using the green scotch bright pads and they'll go through your fingers if you rub with them long enough I usually do keep a bucket of just regular tap water I don't let the parts sit in there because you don't want the mineral buildup from the tap water getting onto the parts I just use it to rinse the uh, residue off and then I put it in distilled water. Another thing I noticed with the simple green is you don't want to just leave your parts sit in there because then they get these weird discoloration lines on it. So you scrub the part, pull it out, rinse it off, and then just put it on a drying rack. I have a step one and step two tank. This step one mix usually ends up with a lot of grease and oil and everything from the machining and working process of the metal. That way you don't contaminate, you keep the contamination compartmentalized into one specific tank. Now you may notice that I'm running the uh, green scrubby pad here and you're probably going to say that's scratching the aluminum. You're right, yes it is. The reason why is this has a brushed finish on the aluminum and as long as you keep going with the green flow, it's not going to show up. If you were going to do a polished part, you definitely would not want to go with a green scrubby pad because, yeah, that would scratch it all up. I'm dealing with a lot of the small holes here. I like using bottle brushes. They seem to do the best job of it. Keeping a large assortment of brushes definitely helps. And then, after you're done, stick it in the tap water rinse and then quickly spray it off with the distilled water so that you don't have any uh, mineral deposits left over. Don't forget to wash your gloves off as well.
And that's how it looks when you do step one. Okay, a lot of times you'll hear what they call the water break test. What it is, is when you have a part like this that's been cleaned, when you spray it with water, it should just sheet off of there and not bead up anywhere on the surface. There's no beading on this part, part's clean, good to go. This is one that hasn't been cleaned yet. As you can see, the water beads up, doesn't really sheet off properly. That means there's oil on the surface, needs more cleaning. Well, I've got step one complete. As you can see, there's still some residual rinse water on there, but it's not balling and beading up. So that's a very good indicator that you've got them clean. So next is going to be step two. And as you can see, step two is definitely a lot cleaner than the step one fluid is. And I'll show you later on as to how I accomplished that. But for now, I need to get to scrubbing on them. I'll see you as soon as I get over to the 740 cleaner. The 740 cleaner is now up to temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and do the plates. With this type of tank, you need to make sure it's up to about 140 degrees before you start doing the run. Also make sure you have a stopwatch handy. So what you do is you let it soak, you agitate it back and forth a little bit. Keep track of your temperature so that it stays in its proper range. And I, I'll come back when I've got all the plates done. Okay, this is my filter and agitator assembly. What I'm using is a Harbor Freight fountain pump. The 640 gallon per hour pump, if I recall. And the reason why I'm using this one is number one, because of the price, but also because it uses the ceramic shaft in there. You don't, you're gonna try to keep as minimal amount of metal in your tank as you can. That's why most of my stuff is out of a cer certain type of plastic or aluminum. Try to keep any other metals out of the tank. The blue part of the filter is kind of a universal type of uh, matte type of filter you use in air conditioning. The bottom filter is a fiber, uh, kind of what they use for making cushions, cushions, that kind of stuff. It's a little bit finer mesh, so it gradually filters down the uh, particle size before it gets down to the pump itself. I also have uh, what's in the marine industry used uh, oil absorbing matte. I've got that in there as well, that way if there is any oil residue that I may have missed, it gets soaked up by the mat. So that way try to uh, filter out as much as possible, that way you don't have any you know, white spots or stuff develop because of something adhering to the part. Now the aluminum piece on this is a uh, cooling coil made out of 3 8 uh, aluminum tubing works very very well it'll cool this tank down from room temperature to its operating temperature usually within 30 minutes these are my cathode plates it's 6061 T6 aluminum and I use 8 inch thick 4 inch wide The reason why I'm doing this without gloves is because I know I'm not going to be putting my hands in the acid any. I finally got everything together ready to go. So I'll do this quick because I'm almost out of battery power. This tank, which is a cooler, I just put a bunch of frozen water bottles in. I've got a teeny tiny little DC pump down there that I use for circulating. And as you see, it is working. 
Now this took a little bit of doing. This is also the reason why I have a see-through tank. So you can make sure nothing is touching. Everything's looking good so far. One other thing I wanted to make note is my operating temperature is around 68 degrees. You can find these online, just type in 720 rule calculator, anodizing calculator. I'm running at 6 amps a square foot, trying to get a thickness, uh, coating thickness of 1 mil. So I will need to plate at 9 amps at uh, basically 2 hours, 120 minutes. Should be getting around 15 volts DC. Let's take a quick look here at the tank. Okay, as you can see the water is really nice and clear right now. Let's see, I'm running a Voltec power supply HY3020EX. Okay. First what we do is so that we can maintain the constant current setting for this model. Go over here to voltage, crank her all the way up, and the current I need 9 amps. Oops, nope. 9. There we go. Now let's see how it's starting to look in there. Oh. And there it goes. Now you can see how the water starts getting cloudy. That's because of the electrolysis process that's going in there. Or anodizing process. Okay, sorry I had to skip ahead a little bit. I just had to make up for some lost time here. So I went ahead and dyed them. And then went ahead and sealed them. Both uh, operations are about 15 minutes each, and I need to get stuff cleaned up today, so that's why I didn't go absolutely with each and every one step by step on camera. But that should give you a general idea. They came out nice. So I'm sure the guy who these go to will be very happy with them.